alive! Don't do that. Hello and welcome back to the shop. This is Think Build Test, and today I've bought a Vivor 12 volt pump, uh, usually intended for a dump trailer, but I'm going to be using it in my shop today, and I'm going to explain why. But uh, we're going to go over and review this and show the setup of it and do some hydraulic hose bleeding. And uh, we're going to make this X frame lift that I've been building actuate for the first time so if you're new to the channel this is a fully custom build um, this is going to be an elevating floor lift as you can see i've got a hydraulic cylinder that we just installed on the last video if you want to watch that how we did it earlier this year we dug this custom pit that was designed specifically for this it's got tons of little goodies tool pockets down there electricity lights ventilation system we poured this thing with our own molds we made so if you want to watch any of that stuff it's all on this channel check it all out subscribe and uh, we hope you enjoy all that stuff anyway like I said today it's gonna to be about hooking up this pump so some of our obstacles dealing with a pit is gonna be space so we had to kind of think about uh, our setup on this and uh, so I needed some shelving for the front of the pit to be able to house our power plant here so I just ordered this shelf, uh, nothing special about it except for it meets the size dimensions we need and I like the see-through shelves because I'm tall and I don't like bending down to look for stuff so uh, I kind of have this arranged with my taller shelves on bottom. Um, I got where I can have some larger oil bins down there and then I'll have my pump and then I can have some fuel filter cartridges and I want my battery all the way up on top because I want to be able to kill the power to this should something go wrong from up on the top of the pit. I don't want to have to try to get down underneath something. I just want to remove a service panel, pull the leads and uh, disconnect. Additionally, I needed some room on this bottom shelf and I have some room for my sump pump. So here's the big question. Why would I not just use a 120 volt pump? And the answer to that is this pit that we're making with this lift is being designed as a multi-function pit. Not only is this gonna be for servicing cars like a regular pit, but this is a concept design for if you wanted to have a pit inside your house garage and you wanted a storm shelter possible extra storage space and then also the functionality of being able to service your vehicle easy at any level so that being said for the function of using it as a storm shelter let's say you have a tornado it comes over your house destroys your house the house falls in on top of you while you're down in the pit if you have this 12 volt battery supply when the rest of your power is knocked out you can use this lift in this hydraulic to free yourself from your own home's wreckage. That's why I did that. And the second reason is that a 120 volt pump that's strong enough costs about $200 more than these ones that are made for like dump trailers. So I was able to buy a $100 battery and save $100 now I will have an additional charge every five to seven years of buying another battery, but like I said, for the function of freeing yourself from the pit, uh, I think that'll be all right. One of the hurdles that we have to overcome when we're doing a build like this is that everything is custom. That our hydraulic hoses and the fittings, uh, what they need to fit to on this ram versus that pump, uh, it's all a custom fit, custom length, so there's an expense involved in that because I had to go get these hoses made. So each hose was about $107 to make because I needed to have 90 degree fittings here so that it fit flat underneath this deck. Hopefully I don't need to build this up any. This was still a little taller than I wanted here, but I wanted 90 degrees. So I'm leaving a little slack here as this hydraulic goes up and down. This will have some room to move here. Um, I'm going to be able to route these hoses out the middle of the frame because there's a little bit of a gap at the middle spot. Uh, 
This rack's about six inches narrower than what my pit is, so all my lines for servicing are gonna run up and down on this side. As you can see, the width goes up here, so I'll have this room on this side to be able to run all my services. Then I can run my battery leads up here on this side, or I actually have a little bit of a gap at the top in my pit for here. I will be getting an emergency cutoff switch. I'm trying to find the right part so that on my emergency switch, I can have a rope that goes around my pit on the inside that I can pull that rope and pull a disconnect on the leads. So if y'all have any good recommendations on an interlock switch with a rope, uh, hopefully one that's not industrial pricing, uh, you know, something under 20 bucks would be great. Then, uh, you know, hit me up in the comments and let me know what you got for ideas for uh, interlocks. As you can see, I've already got my vent and my electrical. I'm gonna run my sump pump down here and uh, all that stuff will be able to go on this side of that shelving. The shelving will go right here in the space where this ladder is. And obviously we're not gonna need this ladder when we're riding the elevator up and down. All right, this is my first time uh, to fill and bleed out a hydraulic ram. But uh, before I look up how to do it, I'm gonna try it on my own, see what I can do. But this is a double acting pump. So there's a reservoir on this side and this side of the cylinder head. And currently when it's in the down position, that cylinder head's gonna be all the way that way. So my ideal is to fill up the top half first connect all its hosing, and then lift up the frame, and that should push out air and fluid uphill through the hose, and I'll have like a catch bucket on the other end, and then we can hook it up to the pump while it's primed, and then after that side's hooked up, we can have this in the up extended, then fill the lower side uh, at that time. Hopefully we'll have enough fluid in the ram to push all the way back through the hoses, but uh, I'm going to try and make as little of a mess as I can. I made sure to leave enough room uh, above this tank so that I'd be able to put a funnel in here at an angle and fill it up. Okay, so we got the down flowing, primed up. Uh, we filled up that reservoir and then lifted this frame up until it pushed all the fluid up to here. So the fluid's all at the head of this. Uh, you've seen it squirted and made a mess out of everything, but uh, that's okay. This was gonna be a messy job no matter what I think. I've been filling this reservoir. I've been keeping that full. Uh, yeah, it's making a mess, but as We've been lifting it up and it's been going up. It's been sucking the fluid up into the ram. So hopefully now we can take and put our fittings on real quick. And then the fluid that's in the ram will push up the hose and prime the bottom hose out too. This is what my 90 degree fitting looks like. Um, we're able to clock this any way we want and then this nut uh, torques down backwards in order to squish that seal in so that you can set the angle that you want. Okay, so I've got all the Rams fittings done. I think what we'll be able to do now is to go ahead and hook up the pump and then do the reverse operation and that should let the reservoir fill up going this way and then that should push down and bleed the other line back up into the tank and then we won't have any more lost fluid hopefully.
All right, moment of truth. Let's hook this up. All right. No shorts going on in the machine. So I've seen some people uh, have a little mixed up instructions whether or not they got the hoses on right. Let's see if I did correct. Uh, in order to siphon all the fluid back into the tank, we want to go down first. So here goes down. Oh yeah, that's correct. Okay, so now that we're all the way down, hopefully the hose is in there. Let's see if we can get this thing to do some tricks. Alive! 25 seconds, about 13 seconds down, 13 seconds up. Uh, honestly, that's faster than I can probably climb the stairs. So it's definitely going a lot faster than I thought it would. A lot of that speed is due to having a little smaller hydraulic cylinder and only having one. Uh, had I have done two hydraulic cylinders or done a larger body of flow, I uh, would have taken more fluid to be able to come in there, but would have had a little more strength. So uh, this is where we're kind of finding out what the right balance for this is. Like I said, I, I like the speed. Uh, definitely going to need some rubber bump stops on this thing. I'm uh, going to need some hose clamps to hold all the hoses exactly where I want them. I'm going to call this a success. Don't see any new leaking down here. so. Uh, all the fittings, all the hoses did everything great. Um, I just got all my hose from a local supplier. Um, one thing that I thought was really cool about this hose is it has this directional arrow. So if your hose maker is good, then they'll know to crimp your two similar ends with the arrows going the opposite way. And that's definitely going to help us, since I hooked it up in the correct order, uh, to remember where everything's at if we got to reassemble this. I went to Sam's and got a 27 series. This is a deep cycle, so this would be like what you would put in an RV that would run uh, hydraulic rams and that. So should be able to get a lot of cycles out of this. It's about $100. I uh, got some four-foot cables. Obviously, we need to hook the power to the solenoid first. If you hooked it directly to here, then the motor would just go immediately when you hooked it up. So uh, right here is the power connect. Your ground is over here on your black lead on your motor. Um, your output outgoing for your lifting side is over on the right. And this one's supposed to have 3,200, 3,000 to 3,200 PSI check valve in it. And I think that the return side for going down has a 1500 PSI check valve. If you like, uh, send me a comment and I'll let you know what the fitting sizes were, uh, what size hose I ended up getting. Um, I don't know those numbers off the top of my head, but I'll throw those up in the description or the comments. Uh, for our next episode, we're going to be leveling and installing our rails for the bottom floor. Um, and then we'll be dropping this thing down in there so you don't want to miss that make sure you're subscribed hope you're enjoying the content and i can't wait to get this thing down in the pit we'll see you on the next episode